In section 1.3, we're going to look at frequency tables and the concept of frequency. Uh, you start with the definition. The frequency of a data value is the number of times it occurs. in the data set. <clears throat> and uh, we're going to have an example of this in just a moment. But uh, what goes along with this is the relative frequency uh, the relative frequency, frequency is the ratio uh, or fraction or uh, proportion you can think of it as a percentage but I'm not going to use that because that looks like a different number uh, but the ratio or fraction or proportion are all exactly the same uh, of the number of times a data value occurs to the total number of outcomes. So in other words, out of all the outcomes together, how many times does that, the, the relative frequency of a data value is the number of times that value appears divided by the total number or the ratio of that number to the total number. Um, you can read this sentence leaving out the parentheses and it's it's readable. I, I did want to mention though that those other terms are the same thing. The ratio is the proportion. Uh, so I've got an example to demonstrate uh, both of these and one additional type of frequency, the cumulative relative frequency. We'll, we'll do that toward the end. but. Uh, I've got an example to demonstrate. First of all, frequency. And uh, let me introduce this with just the data. This example uh, has 20 students were asked the number of hours they worked per day. And I've got a list of data. It's not organized, so it, well, it's a little bit organized. It's in order. That helps a little bit, but uh, it's just a list of numbers. Uh, there are 20 of them. So I'm going to try and do two rows of 10 and line them up just so you can manage this data set. So uh, five, oh, I'm sorry, they're, they're not in order. No, they're not in order. Uh, one of the first things I would do is put these in order. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then uh, another row, five, six, five, four, four, three, five, two, five, three. So there's kind of a long list. Uh, we're going to see that frequency, and especially a frequency table, can help us organize this data so it's much more reasonable, manageable, and uh, less writing. Less writing sounds like it just makes it easier, but really less writing means it's easier to not make mistakes. Uh, okay, so I have to take this, I have to clear this stuff off to, to be able to put my frequency table, but we're gonna start by rewriting that data in a table uh, this is the frequency table. 
I'm going to extend it to include relative frequency, but frequency table, uh, I'm going to have the data value in the first column, and I'm going to have the frequency in the second column. Uh, be sure to save some space on this side because we're going to do a couple more things with this table. You can rewrite it, but it's, it's easiest if you can just use the same table and extend it. So the data values in that list are uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so there all, were only 2s, 3s, 4s, 5s, the, the whole number of hours that these students worked per week. Uh, there were three twos, five threes in that list, three fours in that list, uh, six fives, two sixes, and one seven. So there I've got the, all the different values and how many of each of those values that, for example, there were, five, uh, there were six values of five. And this is getting a little bit hard to read because I don't have lined paper. Uh, but that's just, this is dividing the headings from the data. These are just making it easier to read, I hope. Uh, and that's the frequency table. Now, I want to show you something that we can do with the frequency table before we move on. Um, I can add up the frequencies, the sum or the result of adding up all the different frequencies should give me the total number of data values. And it does. Uh, 8 plus 3 is 11, plus 6 is 17, plus 2 is 19, plus 1 is 20. Remember, there were 20 data values to begin with. So the sum of the frequency is just, it's just kind of a check here that I actually got the right number for all of them. Come on. Okay, so the relative frequency frequency, and I'm going to try to stack this uh, relative frequency so I can leave some space on this side because I am going to extend this further. Uh, but the relative frequency is the fraction of the whole of the data for each data value that the data value of 2, there were 3 of them out of a total of 20. So 3 out of 20 is the relative frequency, the fraction or the ratio of the number of that data value. There are three twos to the whole, there are 20 total. Uh, so what else do we have? Yeah, these, the rest of these, 5 out of 20, uh, 3 out of 20, 6 out of 20, 2 out of 20, and 1 out of 20. And if I added all of those up, all the relative frequencies, that adds up to 1. It has to. If you add all the different proportions for all the different data values, they have to add up to the whole thing, which is uh, 20 out of 20. Uh, yeah, this would look like 20 divided by 20, but Uh, and then uh, one other thing I want to do, I left a little bit of space here because I wanted to write uh, 0.15, uh, 0 0.25, 0 0.15, 0 0.35, no, uh, 0.3. It's 0.3. I'm going to write 0 0.30. See why in a second. Uh, 0.10 and... 0 0.05. Uh, the reason I wrote these as decimals was this, so I could see and kind of show you um, that's 15%. That's 25%. That's 15%. That's 30%. That's 10%. And that's 5%. These percentages, well, I've written them as decimals, but they add up to one. If I wrote them as percentages, 15%, 25%, etc., they would add up to 100%, and 100% is one. So, um, the last thing that we're going to see, I'm going to make the 
the column and the table first and then write down a definition for it. But uh, the important thing is to see how we build it. The cumulative relative frequency. And it's an important concept that we're going to see later in the course, but here it's just a matter of how do you get it. The key to it is that word cumulative. Uh, think of accumulate. If we accumulate values, uh, well, we're putting them together. But what it means is the running total of all the, of, well, of the, of the relative frequency of all the values less than uh, above in this chart, but, but really the, the, the values that are less than are higher on the table just because we started with two and went up to seven. Uh, I'll show you how to do it though. The first one is always exactly the same and I'm going to use the decimals because it, you can use the, the fractions as well, but the decimals I think makes it, makes it a nice pattern. We can look at uh, 0.15 is the cumulative relative frequency for two, the first one. But as we go to the next one, we're accumulating. I'm going to add in the next value. So uh, 0.15 plus 0.25 is 0.4. 0 0.40, so we can see it looks like 40%. 15% plus 25% is 40%. For the next one, I'm going to add in the next one. 40% plus 15%. 40% plus this 15%, that's... 0.55, 55%. And if I add in the next one, 0.55 plus 0 0.30 is 0 0.85, 85%. Uh, if I add another 10%, that's 95% or 0.95. And then finally, that last 5%, 95% plus 5% is 100% or 0 0.95 plus 0 0.05 is 1.00. Now I'm not going to add those. It doesn't have any meaning to add up the cumulatives. There's a meaning for adding up the relative frequencies. I mean, it's just a check. It always adds up to one. I don't think there's any meaning for what these add up to, but we got to this one by adding successive relative frequencies. And this last cumulative relative frequency is always going to be 100% or, or 1.0. Uh, so let me uh, conclude this by putting a verbal definition for cumulative relative frequency. Uh, we had a frequency and relative frequency definition earlier. Uh, cumulative. relative frequency, cumulative relative frequency, uh, is the accumulation of the previous relative frequency. So remember, we added up the relative frequencies kind of as a running total. The accumulation of those gives us the cumulative relative frequencies of the different values.